Hello Chemistry 300 students, Mr. Parker here and this is the first screencast dealing with the idea of gas laws and specifically it's going to deal with um, the Boyle's Law and as you can see some different pictures or diagrams on here that will help you out and kind of explain what Boyle's Law is all about. Um, we're looking at a graph here you can see um, dealing with a, it's a volume versus pressure graph. Um, we have Boyle's Law, the equation that you're going to be working with with P1V1 equals P2V2 and this illustration here is showing you as you increase the volume, okay, the pressure will be going down. And here is, so you can see the volume is actually decreasing and the pressure is actually going up as long as we keep the constant temperature. This image over here um, tells you that you have high pressure means low volume. Um, and then the opposite, meaning if you have low pressure, it means you're going to have high volume. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the specifics about Boyle's Law, okay. Basically, this is the, the pressure of a gas is inversely related to its volume when temperature and the number of uh, particles are held constant, okay? So, inversely proportional, again, basically means as, uh, the pressure goes up and the volume goes down, or if the volume goes up, then the pressure goes down, okay? Um, as you can see here, if the pressure we represent with P increases, then the volume, which is represented with the letter V, will decrease, okay? And... Um, Looking at some more images that will help explain that, as you can see with the piston action that's occurring, okay, we have a certain volume here of four liters, and then we have a pressure of one atm. And as we decrease the volume, okay, we're uh, also that means what we're doing is we're increasing the pressure. And what that means, basically, the reason the pressure is increasing is there's more collisions of the particles against the um, side of the walls here, which will increase that pressure. Okay, we, have a, we haven't introduced more particles, we've just decreased the volume, which means we're decreasing or increasing the pressure. And when you look at this graph here, notice we have pressure on the bottom, we have volume here on the y-axis, and what you can tell, it basically tells you that it's inversely proportional to each other. So as my volume starts decreasing, okay, my pressure starts increasing. Um, now the graph could go the opposite direction, if I start increasing my volume, then my pressure will uh, well, my pressure will also will start to decrease. Okay, so again, looking at Boyle's law, we're talking about volume goes up, pressure goes down, as you see here. Okay, large volume, pressure's down. Here you can see the pressure is increasing due to the fact the volume is being decreased. Again, volume is going down, less volume, more pressure. And you could do the opposite, again, where if you increase the volume, your pressure is going to basically be decreasing from that, okay? So the equation for Boyle's Law can be uh, rearranged to solve for any factor that we want to, all right? So um, here's kind of the steps that you should go through to solve for that. So we have P1V1 equals P2V2, and depending on what you want to solve for, you can rearrange this and kind of the steps here, organize the data in the table of initial and volume, final conditions. Uh, rearrange the gas law to solve for whatever unknown quantity do you want. So, um, you know, if we want P1 by itself, okay, you can go ahead and do that. You just move over uh, V1 by, you know, you divide both sides by V1, and then you would have the P2, V2 divided by the P1. I can kind of show you how that works out. So let me just go ahead and grab my little, uh, sorry, my little ink feature here. Let's go back. All right, here we go. All right, now I'm ready to go. So we have, if we divide both sides by our V1, okay, and we're left here with P1 equals P2, P2 divided by P1. That's if we're solving, if we want to solve for V1, or sorry, for P1. And it kind of works the same way if we want to solve for V1, or if we want to solve for a P2 or V2. So depending on what your variable that um, you want to uh, change, to actually solve for, is how you rearrange the equation um, so you can fit in the appropriate variables. So here's a little sample question for you. We have a, a sample of helium gas in a balloon has a volume of 10 liters at a pressure of a 0.9 atms. Now what's happening is that it's at 1.4 atms, so we've, we've increased the pressure, but we've held the temperature constant, is the new volume represented by A, B, or C balloon, okay? So what we've done is we've gone, our volume here was initially at 10 and our pressure was initially at 0.9. We've increased our pressure 
So uh, increasing our pressure, which one, A, B, or C balloon would be our answer? So think about that for a second. Okay, so going through that, and if you wrote down letter A, you're correct, okay? So the sample of helium gas in balloon is a volume of 10 liters at a pressure of 0.9. At a higher pressure, the new volume is represented by a smaller balloon. Okay, remember the pressure went from 0.9 up to 1.4, and because the pressure goes up, a larger pressure means we have a smaller volume because there's more collision, okay, more collisions in that smaller balloon, which means the pressure is going to be greater, okay? All right, uh, here's another. If we, so in this sample, uh, helium gas in a volume of 6.4 liters at a pressure of 0.7 atms, what is the new volume when the pressure is increased to 1.4 atms? All right, so instead of showing this one, pic do the picture of the balloon, we're going to actually do the work, the math behind it, and solve for it. Okay, um, so using our little tool here, let me get my pen. Okay, so we know that the volume, initial volume here is we're starting off with 6.4. And the initial pressure here is 7.1. So this would be our volume 1, and this we would know be our P1. Okay? And what is the new volume? So what we're looking for, they want to know, is what is volume 2 is kind of the question that we're looking for. And this is going to be our P2. Okay? And then you can see here the temperature is held constant. All right. So kind of having this written typed out for you nicely, I have. So step 1, we need to know what are our... our known variables okay and again what we know as you can see here is we know p1 is 0.7 atms v1 is 6.4 liters like we labeled up here in the diagram or in the question this is typically i how i do it is i underline what i know and try to put the variables above it and then condition two is basically we know p2 is 1.4 what we're looking for is v2 okay so we know that, that the p increases and the v is decreasing Okay, so sorry, that's kind of off a little bit. Um, so we have the P is increasing. Okay, so we're going, the pressure is increasing. As you can see, we're going from 0.7 up to 1.4. Okay, if the pressure is increasing, then we know the volume, or our prediction is that the volume is going to decrease. We need to move that over a little bit. All right, so we know the pressure is going up. That means the volume has to go down because of Boyle's Law. So moving on to the second step of the equation. Okay, so we need to solve for Boyle's Law for V2. So we, we have rearranged the equation okay, to get V1. Um, basically, you have your V2 there is what we're solving for. All right, and then you take your 6.4 liters, which is the volume 1, divided by, um, and then we have a point, is 7 atms and 1.4 atms, and we should end up with our, our equation of 3.2 liters. Okay, so the volume decreases when there's an increase in the pressure, and this is exactly what it shows us, because initially we started off with 6.4 liters, and we ended up with 3.2 liters. If you think about this, the pressure, okay, was originally 0.7, and now it's 1.4, so it doubled, whereas if you look at the volume here, the volume actually went from 6.4 down to 3.2, so it went in half. Again, it's that inversely proportional so the number it goes up is going to be the number that the, um, you know, if the volume pressure goes up, then that means it's going to go down to equal amounts in the volume. Okay. So again, we had to solve for V2 in this case, and we had to rearrange the equation. But you can solve for any of those variables um, through this um, using the P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Okay. So that was um, screencast session on Boyle's Law. So hopefully you've learned some things from there. And you can take this into your class and we can go ahead and do some more um, problems and hopefully you have a better understanding of how to do them. And we'll definitely do a lot more practice in class. All right. So have a good day. The next thing we're going to learn about is the gas laws. There are three of them. And the first one is called Boyle's Law. Now, we are the gas particles and we're inside a box. Just a regular box, but we're a very, very special gas. We're called an ideal gas. Whee! Listen boys, we're an ideal gas. Whee! But what does that mean? Well, because we're an ideal gas, that means we have to follow special rules. The first rule of Ideal Gas Club is 
there are lots and lots and lots of particles. The second rule of gas club is, is that when we're bouncing off each other, these collisions are perfectly elastic. Can you remember what that means? It means that there's no energy lost in the collision. The third rule of gas club is, is that when we're bouncing around, the only time we interact with each other is when we hit off each other. There are no forces between us. And the last thing about us, the last law of gas club, is that we're very, very small. That means that the box is mostly filled with space. So that's the rules for being in an ideal gas. Whee! Now, the first gas law we're going to learn about is Boyle's law. Or as the French call it, le Marriott law. Or something like that. Boyle's law concerns the gas particles in a box. And I want you to think about us bouncing off the walls and bouncing off each other. But we're going to change something. Okay? We're going to change the volume of the container. The temperature is not going to change. That's absolutely certain. The temperature is not going to change. We're going to keep it the same. But we're going to change the volume. Now, you can see it's bouncing around. What do you think will happen if the volume of this container is cut in half? Have a guess. If you guessed that when they cut the volume of the container in half, that the number of collisions doubled, you'd be right. Whee! That's what happens. Look, regular size container we're bouncing off like this. B, O, E, A. But when you cut the container in two, look, O, E, O, E, O. It's such a laugh. So as you can see, the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional to each other. When you double one, the other one halves.